It's here. It's finally here. The brand spanking new DaveMossTuning.com. All of Dave's videos and articles in one convenient location. Click the link below and enjoy. So many questions about chains. How long do they last? But more importantly, how do you know they're done? So, if you really take care of your chain and sprockets and lube and adjust it and clean it and do it every three to 500 miles, you might get 26,000 miles out of it if everything else is perfect with your rear wheel alignment and everything else being all in sync. For the rest of us that are not that meticulous, you might see six to 8,000 miles out of a chain on the road. And then on a track or a race bike, considerably less because it's getting significantly more abuse. So how do you figure out what you've got and whether it's dead or not dead? So in this case with my race bike, this chain's gonna be replaced. It has reached its natural expiration. What that means is the chain can touch the tire that way and hit the side wall of the tire no problem, which means conversely it can come all the way out here. So your chain, yours in a U shape, a long, long way side to side. It moves around a ton. So that's the first dead giveaway. The second is that if you push it up, the top of the chain double bounces. What that shows you is that the plates and the bushings are starting to basically wear out. There's very little friction between them. And because of that, the chain again slaps around a lot. So if there's very little friction between the plates and the bushings, guess what? The chain's going to yaw. So the example you can see at the bottom makes sense, but at the top, it can come right off the runner, way past the runner. In fact, almost the entire link comes outside of that protective chain runner. So that's no good whatsoever. Then the third piece of the puzzle to look at is if you can get a lot of free play between the chain and the teeth. And what that means is you've got to grab it and you've got to pull it back. So take the chain in the middle of the, at nine o'clock, and then, can, how far can you pull it back? Now if you can pull this back enough to start seeing the U under here, then that chain's shot, it's beyond gone. So when you can get all this free play back here and a lot of movement where the link comes halfway up the tooth, it's done. So, you're in a U, Will the chain go outside the runner? Can you flex it out there? And can you pull it off the back of the sprocket? It's time. I don't care how well you've taken over maintenance of your chain, whether you've got a new chain, whether you've gone ahead and taken a used bike with an old chain. When it's done, it's done. Throw it away. Get another chain. And yes, buy expensive chain. Do not buy cheap chain because you'll be replacing on average two or three cheap chains to a good chain. It isn't worth it. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So easy, quick assessment. If in doubt, it's gone. Get another one. And before you make that decision of just throwing this chain away, you need to know how many links you have in the chain. And boy, is that a tedious process because you have to count them all. So you have to find your master link and then start counting all the face plates from the master link. So you know if you have 112, 14, 16, 18, 20, those are the standard lengths. So if you know you have a 120 link chain, you can go buy a 120 link chain. You don't have to cut it, you rivet it and job's done. Or if you do it in a road bike and it's just a clip link, eh, not good. You can do that. So count your links as well. It's a step that everybody forgets because then when they go to the store to buy the chain, oh, how many links do you have? Mm, I have to go home. I'll be back. <laughs> to schedule a remote tuning appointment for you and your bike with Dave via text, email, Facebook, etc., contact Dave on Facebook or by email.
dave at davemostuning.com.